on. Hi, everybody. It's Lunch with Leah, episode number 25. I've been doing this for 25 weeks now, and you guys must be amused and entertained. So get out your popcorn, your protein bar, your Xanax smoothie, whatever it is you're going to have today, and let's enjoy the ride. So listen, last week we're building our numbers. We had over 100,000 people. So we're getting there. You guys have to share this with your friends. We need to get up to 100 million people so I can tell everyone else just to go (laughs) off. Okay. Now, first, before we get started, I want to mention Kim Zolziak's son who had the dog bite. And we're sending our love and blessings to her. And let me tell you, this is a very traumatic thing. My son, when he was about 10 years old, We had adopted or rescued a um, Doberman Pinscher. His name was Blue. And the dog was playing with my son. And my son grabbed the the ball out of his mouth. And he bit him on the the elbow. We go to the hospital. We think we're going to get a few stitches and go home. Five days later, two surgeries later, a pump around the clock later, me in the hospital. I didn't sleep for an entire week. And it's a traumatic thing. So poor little thing. So get well. We're thinking of you. And poor Kim. And she missed Watch What Happens Live because of it. So I know it's traumatic. Meanwhile, have you been following the news? Oh, God. If you can follow the news anymore, I have to sift out. As long as you don't listen to Fox. But anyway. So listen what's going on on the airplanes. All right. You know, you know about the guy that was dragged off and broke two teeth, broke his nose, did this, that, the other, bleeding, the whole thing. Okay. Allegedly. It's all true. Okay. Well, now then the same airlines united some, a scorpion bit someone's finger on United Airlines. Can you imagine? I think I'm allergic to scorpions. That would be millions of dollars for me million dollars and I'd be talking about that for 25 years. They would have a real problem if it bit me. Then an Asian airline, the crew's cleaning up after everyone departed. Someone left their kid on the plane sleeping. What is going on on the planes? And then on top of that, now they're making these cars that can fly. I don't know. And then the stroller. Did you guys see where the the other one on American Airlines, which is what I fly, minus the time I'm fighting over my little dog. Did you see what happened? This guy was over the stroller fighting with one of the passengers and they get in a tit for tat and now he's apparently suspended. I mean, I'm telling you, I could be one of those people because it's easy for me to get in a fight. You push the wrong button and I'm going to put you in your place. They'd be dragging me off that plane. I'd be going screaming and now you can't even imagine. Can't even imagine. Oh my God. And by the way, where's the people's couch commenting on all this stuff? I'm so upset with Bravo for not putting on the people's couch right now. That's right. So let's get down to some gossip while we're all here. Well, the Beverly Hills reunion. It was, it didn't disappoint, but it wasn't like, uh, wasn't the most feisty one I've ever seen. What about the Sassoon and all the hugs? I mean, she hugs for 15, how many minutes, eight minutes or 12 seconds or whatever, because it gets rid of the distance between people and the this and the that. I'm like, girl, take some ecstasy and go to the nightclubs. Do do not do that to me. You want to hug me for 10 minutes, you're going to have a problem. Then uh, they rehash the drinking. They rehash the death. You know, uh, what's her name? Kim's on the verge of death, and she's trotting in with the thing. And thank God the bunny's now going to be in the clubhouse. So Andy gets to keep the bunny. So we're all happy about the bunny. Now we have a home for the bunny, the poor little homeless bunny. And then Renna tells Kim that you're my, I'm your meal ticket. That's why you come after me is to stay on the show. Well, I can relate to that because I think I was a few people's meal tickets on the show, by the way. I think I was just like the catnip and the pinata all at once. But who's still standing? It's not when you get knocked down. It's how you stand up. Now, speaking of Renna, you know, everyone makes fun of those pills that she carries around because she said she had a Xanax in there. She wanted to pop one in a smoothie or whatever. Renna has nothing on me. This is in my daily bag every day. Okay, let's just start right here. I have all these vitamins that I take. And then I take, oh, aspirin in case you have a heart attack for anybody in the neighborhood. Then I have my other big vitamins that I take. And then I take 
take my lunch vitamins, and then I have my stevia because I don't like any with anything in it other than fiber stevia. I don't want any additives or preservatives. Then I have my dog's calming medicine in case they all get wound up and need to relax. And then, of course, I have my hemp, my concentrated pharmaceutical-grade hemp, which is the cure-all, be-all, relax-all, do-everything. That's just in my daily drugs. Then I have another little bag that says breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that's all in my little purse every day. So, Lisa, you have nothing on me. And then did you hear I could say, well, I have a prettier bag than that. I want to see my vitamins. Hi. So anyway, that was that. Uh, and then, oh my God, I didn't catch this. I'm so, I'm so stupid. It went right over my head. But Eileen caught it. So Kim apparently is always throwing shade that this is a reality show and then there are real actors and there are real films and there are real TV series, which you know her and her sister were in. I thought that was rather clever, her little subtle digs. No one would have caught it except Eileen brought it up. So thanks for outing her and giving us some gossip to chew on. And then, of course, the emotional moment of the night was uh, Lisa Renna, I mean Lisa Vanderpump's son, adopted son looking for his birth mother and her tearing up. That was nice and touching and brought a little levity to the craziness. And then, you know, the rescue and good for her and Ken for rescuing those pets. People can say what they want about the Vanderpumps, but and for what whatever reason that they do it, but they do give back and they do have a really aware social consciousness about doing good in the world. So good for them. However, the master of horror Ryan Murphy says that he couldn't have written anything deeper or uglier than Bunnygate. Oh! <laughs> well, honey, you need to go back to the creative drawing board if that's the ugliest it can get for you. Creepier was the word he used. I can't read my own writing. Vicki Gumbelson, Orange County. She says that employees have stolen thousands of dollars from her. And she wants their money back, and she wants these people in jail, and they have poached her clients. Well, I agree with you, Vicki. If they poached her clients and stole from you, you get your money back, and you lock them up, as Flynn says. Lock them up. Uh, then we're watching Billions. I know you guys are loving Billions. And then, oh, my God, how much did we love Feud, the ending of Feud. It was just so good. If you haven't seen it, you've got to watch it. And then B Little Big Lies. Of course, the guys here, you know, Gay City got me watching the girls in Hollywood back in the day, a uh, little um, uh, Bet and Joan, and then they got me watching uh, Little Big Lies. So Little Big Lies, I watched the whole thing. I binge watched it. It was captivating. What? Oh, it's Big Little Lies. Well, Little Big Lies, Big Little Lies, everybody fucking lies. N fake news. Lie is the new truth, according to fake news, alternate facts. Then we're watching The Voice, and then these two watch The Bait Motel. I didn't watch The Bait Motel. I just can't imagine. Is it Rihanna being the one getting stabbed in the shower? Well, nah. She didn't. Get in she didn't? Okay, they, well, I didn't see it. They did their it. own take. On they the did their own take. Well, I'm back with the other girl that did. Was it Tippi Hedren, or who yeah. was it that got? Yeah, she, she's my girl for getting stabbed in the shower. <laughs> then we saw the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion. Well, Sheree, for the first time... Poppy, calm down. No one's abusing you. We're getting ready to talk about abuse. For the first time ever admitted that she had had physical abuse with her ex-husband. Now, apparently, they're going to bring him on the show, which they should, because if she's going to say he physically abused her and cry and sob and say she's never told anybody ever about it because raising her kids and keeping the family together was more important, they should give him the opportunity to, the dog is just going in circles. It's a metaphor of my life, just going in circles, going in circles, going in circles. Calm down. Uh, anyway, so they're going to bring him on, Bob's his name, and let him tell his side of the story about, you know, spousal abuse. So sometimes these shows do bring, uh, you know, like things that people should be aware of to the, to the surface. So good for the shows. Then Kenya... Oh, my God, her and that boyfriend, apparently she admitted they had sex in the back of the car. Well, big deal. I mean, is that like breaking news? I mean, really? So it's not the, what they call it, the fly high club. It's the back seat of the car club. Oh, my God, you had too much information. But she said she stayed with him, even though he was kicking the door in and breaking the windows on everything, because she felt like that there was another side to him and she could fix it. Girl, I told you this the first time he whacked whatever he whacked, other than his you know what, 
Get rid of him. Cut your loss. They don't change. They get worse. So good for you. She's finally going to be done with him. Now, I guess he's going to come on and tell his side of the story. What? What, kind of, what can you say about your side of the story? You kicked in the garage door, you broke the window on the car, you, you slapped somebody around. I mean, what kind, I don't get the side of the story, allegedly. And then apparently, Phaedra, uh, divorce was final and everyone questioned it, but he's contesting it. Now, this is a guy that was a criminal in jail. She takes him into her house, marries the guy, supports him for years, gives him a second chance. He goes out and gets arrested again and is back in jail. And he's contesting the fact that he's only going to get $100,000 in the settlement. (laughs) Really, dude? Hello? And they say there's no recidivism. (laughs) Now, in if you don't know that word means well you're not married to a lawyer okay so now speaking of perfume twats Joanna Krupa's trial apparently is scheduled for August the 7th they had a five hour mediation in Miami and they're at an impasse I spoke to Joanna and she Ah, uh, well, never mind. I won't tell you what she said, you know, but whatever. You know, I told her many years, months back to drop the suit. But what I'll tell you is that I talked to my husband about it, and he said it's going to be a very expensive trial because all these witnesses would have to fly here from California. And Brandy doesn't really have any money, allegedly, anyway. So why are they going after money that somebody doesn't have unless it's just to clear her name and make her admit that she made it up or she lied about it or whatever? So I'm not sure, because I'm not going to get into my private conversation, speaking of private parts, but I think it must hinge on the mediation impasse, must hinge on the fact that Brandy's not willing to say what it would take to have Krupa feel she's been vindicated. And you know, Brandy's following me again on Twitter. She got mad at me, quit following me because I made that tweet about when you have one twat walking around with a tampon hanging out of it, criticizing another twat needing perfume, who are you to talk? And she got all mad and got her panties all wet up or not. And apparently, back to Pantygate, I'm wondering how long it's going to be before Andy gets the panties in the, in the, in the clubhouse. clubhouse. <laughs> perfume? He's going to get panties. Yeah, he's going to get panties from uh, Erica, and then he's going to get some perfume from Joanna. Oh, Lord. Now, Larsa Pippen and Scotty are apparently getting divorced, and I'm really sad about that because I adored them as a couple, and they were so happy together for so many years. They have those four darling kids, so I'm really sorry to hear that. They tried to get back together, apparently, and it didn't work. Of course, every press outlet in the world called me for a comment on it, and I kept my mouth shut. Only, I guess, I could open it here. My big mouth can't keep it shut for long. Oh, and then Erica gets voted off at Dancing with the Stars. Well, that's, I thought she should, oh, must be the president calling. No, it's, I don't know who it is. Well, we'll just say ignore. Um, Erica gets voted off. I was surprised about that. I thought she'd be on a lot longer. Barry Manilow announced that he's publicly marrying another guy. guy. I always thought he was gay. Never occurred to me that he wasn't gay. Uh, This is like supposed to be like world breaking news. Barry Manilow marrying a guy. No kidding. I mean, did anybody ever think that he was straight? He was never straight. He's oh, he's just a creative genius. I love him, but I just thought it was so funny that everyone made such a big deal about him marrying a guy. But, you know, his big fan base, all these older women, just love everything that he does. And they don't want to have sex anymore anyway, so they, of course they don't care. <laughs> and, uh, you know, our friend over at the Abbey, what's his name? Yeah, allegedly. Uh, David Cooley, who's also a friend of mine, whom I adore, has got his own reality show at the Abbey. Now, I used to go to the Abbey. I still go there from time to time, with usually with Julian Brandy from The People's Couch or Ronnie from Watch What Crappens, who we did the episode with a couple of weeks ago, or Brendan from E! or, you know, some of the, whatever, some of the housewives. We go to the Abbey. The Abbey is my, one of my favorite places to go, uh, especially on a Sunday afternoon. Everyone's drunk but me, and you know you have to be straight to observe the drunks, so it's really kind of an interesting thing to watch, but I think that reality show could be really good. I'm certain that I'll be making a cameo in it. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. Oh, the fate. Um, oh, the movies. Smash? 
coming out and Fate of the Furious. Smash? Smash. <coughs> Smashed with Amy yeah, Schumer and smashed. Goldie Hong, whatever yeah. it's called. <laughs> smashed. But you got their names But right. I got the names right. <laughs> now, Goldie has got one of my purses. Hand me that gold bag over there, James. Goldie's got one of my handbags, and I'm going to show you. I think it's, she's got one of the gold ones we sent her right here on the table. What are you doing going to the warehouse? Go walk to the warehouse at the table. Yeah, Just hand me the gold bag. Oh, my God, how complicated. This, this is my life. So Goldie Hawn carries one of these bags around. Y'all, there's six gold ones. Well, this is maybe the one she carries. <laughs> uh, let's see. Faye Dunaway kept public about how what happened at the Oscars when she uh, kind of messed up the name of who won. And she says, you know, that it, she was sounding confused because Warren didn't, she thought he was just playing with her and being difficult. And so when he handed her the card, she didn't read the whole thing. She just read the name at the bottom and she felt terrible and guilty about it later. But that Warren is so charming that she was just kind of going along with him, kind of, she thought, teasing the audience and uh, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, that's kind of sad. Poor thing. I love Faye Dunaway. Oh, she had a little bit of a storyline in uh, Betty and Jones feud too. I just love her. I ran into her one time and she didn't have her makeup on. She had a baseball cap on in LA and she was in a warm up suit and I knew she was trying to not let anybody know who she was. Of course, I knew who she was and <laughs> I was like, oh, man, what? but I didn't want to embarrass her so I didn't say anything but I started talking to her like I didn't know who she was. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, sure. I don't think anyone else in there knew who she was because they were all under 25. You know, they hired these young girls that don't have a fucking clue what's going on anymore. Oh, so what did I miss on that? I think I missed something. Uh, Richard Simmons. Oh, my God. He came out of hiding. Apparently, he had to go to the hospital. He had a sick, for a sick stomach problem. He was hospitalized. He says he's fine. Uh, he called in on some talk show and said that he was fine coming out of the hospitals. But, you know, he was still hiding behind an umbrella when he came out of the hospital. How do you go from being out there all the time to being hiding under an umbrella like Greta Garbo all the time? Uh, what is he hiding? I don't know. It's something weird. Now, according to Caitlyn Jenner, who I am so over by now, I mean, poor thing, the minute I found out he voted for Trump, I was like, I am just done with you. You're going to be talking about having your thing cut off and a Republican vote for a Republican and what bathroom you're going to use and you vote for a Republican. I mean, I, he says he had the final surgery. Well, good for him. I know somebody told me they knew somebody that had it. It's a big deal. It takes months to heal. Congratulations. I hope Andy doesn't put that in the clubhouse. Oh, my God, Andy will be asking to put it in the clubhouse on ice. But anyway, according to him, yeah, in a jar of formaldehyde, a formaldehyde jar on the bar. But according to him, you're not supposed to ask. Oh, etiquette, etiquette, Caitlin, of all people preaching etiquette, you're not supposed to ask transgenders if they had the final surgery. Oh, please, Caitlin, is there anything secret about you anymore? <laughs> oh, and oh, and then the guy in The Bachelor got arrested for leaving the scene of a crime where he ran into a trailer and there was a fatality. So shame on you, tractor. So shame on you for running away from the scene of the crime. Oh, my God, allegedly. Uh, and Kim Zolziak apparently has signed on uh, season 10 on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, but she's not going to be full time. She's just going to go in and stir up, you know, stir up the stuff and get slap some bitches around and leave, I guess. <laughs> now, I watched The Real Housewives of um, oh, New York. Well, they had the Sag Harbor trip. Dorinda thinks that Sonia's jealous of her and other people's relationships. I don't think Sonia's jealous of anybody. I adore Sonia. She's my favorite. Ramona pressing Bethany about the nude photos in Brent at school. Well, those are photos, if I recall, that Bethany took to celebrate PETA and, and not harming animals, I guess, for clothes and shoes and everything. And Ramona's sitting there interrogating her like she's on the witness stand under oath about, well, what does your daughter think? Well, our daughter's like four or five years old. Her daughter doesn't think anything. Her daughter, I'm just like, and this goes on and on and on. And Bethany, I love Bethany's response. She goes, you know, girls, uh, at what level, like on a scale of like one to 10, do you think your opinion matters to me? <laughs> Oh, God. And then, uh, and then Ramona says, well, I just want to be able to tell people what I'm thinking. Well, you do that. There's no question about it. I've always said the New York Housewives, 
are like a Seinfeld show. It's all about nothing. They talk nonstop, 90 miles an hour, amongst themselves. At the end of the show, what happened? It was just all about nothing. And uh, then for, for Ramona lecturing about manners and being polite, I thought that was a little bit clever. And then Sonia wasn't invited to stay at Ramona's house, and she kind of got her feelings hurt. Why do you care? If someone doesn't want me to stay at their house, I definitely don't want to be there. And he's like not getting invited to a party. Go marry. By the way, if you're invited to a party, then you got to go and act and be nice and smile and put on the bullshit. And if you're not invited, you can stay home and watch TV and play with your dogs. I mean, these people get offended over nothing. But then Sonia starts texting people, you know, and telling them this and that and blah, blah. And they're against you. Sonia, word to the wise. Don't put anything in writing. Don't put it in writing. Call them. Don't put it in writing. They'll use it against you, and they'll twist it out of context. Eric Farley says manner lesson from Ramona. <laughs> I know, and I love Ramona. I think she's just hilarious to watch. Oh, and then United Airlines, speaking of that thing with uh, that guy being pulled off, they came out with a statement that it was the guy's fault. They're still sticking to the fact that the guy was being belligerent, and there's a video that proves otherwise. I mean, the fake news anymore. I just can't take it anymore. <laughs> So let's see, where are we running out? No, we still have plenty more time. Oh, so listen to this. So do you ever wonder what happens to the hotel soap when you leave it in your room? Well, two million bars are thrown away, but the rest of it, a nonprofit organization called Clean the World, founded by Sean Siepler, takes care of 9,000 children that are needlessly die, dying of diseases like, you know, uh, what did they say it was? It was mostly pneumonia and diarrhea, and it saves lives. So. If you're feeling guilty about only using a little bit of that soap, leave it there because they sterilize it and recycle it and they distribute it and 108 million people in the world are facing severe you know, problems from being unhealthy or starvation, so it's going to good cause. So I'm not gonna be stealing my Bulgari soap out of the room anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna use it once so that they can recycle it. I used to put it in my bag and bring it home. <laughs> Got a couple, I don't uh, need some, ashtrays. A couple of hellos from Panama City, and uh, and then Judy said, "Let's know how RJ's birthday was." Oh, RJ's birthday was at Benihana's. Oh God, you know you smell like a Benihana when you leave. <laughs> but the kids love it. They love it. And then they had the birthday cake, and then they had the four boys sleep over, and then they sit and they talk and they play the video games and. I don't know. It's been a long while. Remember the one he planned on the show where he planned his own birthday party and ordered everything online? He's grown up a little bit now. I just have to take him to Benihana's. Freda went. Speaking of, if there was one morsel left on anybody's plate at the table, anybody's, even if they had eaten on it and slobbered on it, Freda packed it up and took it home to eat it later. I'm like Frida, we're not on a food budget, you have a credit card, you have a driver, you have a house full of food, you have a delivery truck that comes with all the meat and the fish and that, why are you taking all this food home? Oh, delicioso, delicioso. So she took all the food home, we left there with five bags of food and I was just like, oh, it's gonna smell up the refrigerator, but anyway. Uh, Speaking of, yes. We're from New York. They're all saying hello. They like your, your scarf today. Too. Oh, you like my new scarf? Oh, good. I had to get a new ah. scarf because you know I just wear the same th kind of things with scarves all the time. Let's see if there's anything else we want to talk about. Oh, let's see. Oh, we don't have... Oh, oh these two. Oh, my God. I got to give a shout out to Joanne Bibolo. Congratulations on your book called Lush and Lux. It's a powered about powered by positivity. It's on Amazon and you can, oh, she's from Canada. And look at this. She has exquisite taste. This is a picture of her, by the way. Look how pretty she is. She's an author. This is like her second or third or fourth book. She does very well. Look how beautiful the book is. And look, she did a whole chapter on me. <laughs> So we know it's a good book, so you should all go and buy it right away on Amazon. Speaking of good books, how many of you read Red Carpets and White Lies? Because if you haven't read it yet, you're not in on the gossip, so you need to read it. Read. What? It's a good summer read. It's a good summer read. You can give it as a great Mother's Day present, too, by the way. And you can, honestly, if you read this book, it's like a no-brainer read. It's like a fun, it's like you don't have to stress about anything. You can just, like, follow the gossip of Miami. 
Mother's Day special. Oh, our non-surgical facelift kit. Remember I told you get eight to 10 facials? For $79, two for one for Mother's Day. That means you get to have one for yourself and one for your mother. And I guess we're going to give the free makeup bag. Is that the white makeup bag? Where's that white makeup bag? Let me see one. I'm going to show you about this bag because you're going to love this bag and you'll see instant results. And all these things are available on leahblack.com. So do not forget under any circumstance to get this book by my friend. Oh, these are the bags that you get for free. And let me tell you what I love about this bag. First of all, it's you can wash it. It's, kind, it's not reversible, but I love the lining more. It's got our little label in it. Fabulous. But remember the pussy parade? I still think this makes a little pussy hat. And I just think it's so cute as a little pussy hat. You could dye it pink, but I kind of like the white one. But, you know, in the current administration, they like the KKK. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, and then I'll leave you with something fabulous. <laughs> How to buy a diamond. Number one, do your research. Number two, get an idea of the budget that you have. I like an unlimited budget and then I like to exceed it. Uh, find a jeweler that you trust. Uh, get conflict-free diamonds from countries that follow the Kimberly process, meaning they don't use human abuses to make the, get the diamonds. And know about the cut, the clarity, the carrot, and the color. If you need any advice on that, just send it to hello at leahblack.com. <laughs> That's something we know a little bit about. So before we wrap up, I'm going to leave you with, oh my God, first I got to show you this. The Nassau County man, he was high on meth. He cut off his genitals and fed them to an alligator. Only in Florida would somebody, this is the dumbest damn thing. Oh my God. Where is that other guy that just had his cut off? I'm shut my mouth now. But can you imagine he cut him off? Imagine you're on a high. You wake up and you're not high anymore and something's missing and your friends go, oh, the alligator in the swampland ate it. I mean, what are you going to do? People, I can't. And my motivational quote, uh, quote for the week, and no matter what, don't forget next week, lunch with Leah, noon Facebook Live on Wednesdays. And please share this with all your friends. We're at 100,000. I need to get up to 100 million. I need to surpass, what's his name? Oh, Jimmy Kimmel, one of those. Uh, my motivational quote, you know, I make up all these quotes every week. That's why I'm my pillows with my quotes and all my stuff. This one was this week. Either run your life or it will run you. There you go. Little Black, come say bye. Come on, baby. Come on, little boy. Come on. Little Black is here to say goodbye. He's been barking. Okay, everybody, we'll see you next Wednesday. Tune in and please share your video. Post it on all your social media. And I get all a lot of my gossip from all those sites like the Real How Mr. Real Housewife and Fit Fab and Fun and TMZ. And who else do we listen to? Reality T, Perez Hilton. So Entertainment Tonight. That's where I got all. And people ask me all the time. They send in questions. We didn't do any questions today. People send in questions like, well, how do you know all this? And where do you get all this information from? I read. In my house, you have to read because everywhere you look, there's either a book, a magazine, or 17 newspapers. So I just read a lot, and that's where I get all this stuff from. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> bye, everybody. I'll see you next week. Say bye, little black. <laughs> <laughs>